Hello, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Liquid Brain. So today I want to talk about parallel computing and how you can enable parallel computing in R and R Studio and why is it important. So basically, some a little background with what is parallel computing. So parallel computing, as the name suggests, is to run computing analysis into in parallel of each other. So if you don't already know, your CPU actually doesn't have a single logical processor. Uh, in this case, if you go to, let's say, you're, if you're running Windows, you can go to Task Manager, go to Performance and choose CPU. You'll be able to see that my CPU specifically, I'm running a 3570, has four logical processors that uh, can process four things at the same time. So if you have a problem that you can send it to them, send it to them individually, uh, means that you can actually speed out a four minute task into a single minute task for example. So of course, that will depends on how you were able to slice the problem up into four chunks and send each of the instruction to individual processors to be run. So provide you can do that, um, parallel computing are more like how a real world actually functions. Uh, we have so many people, everyone solve one small problem at a time, uh, so that with a bigger chunk of problem, you can, say, you can solve the same problem with less time and less money, okay? So with that, we are able to leverage the kind of um, cloud computing interface or yeah, crowd, com crowd computing, not cloud computing, where many people solve one solve problem at a time and aggregately we're able to solve a much larger problem than any single supercomputer in the world. So that's essentially something like uh, folding at home. I think it's a good example where they try to send multiple processes to all of the users that they have and every single one of every single people uh, solve a small part of a of a big problem okay so um just for the same example you, the if you are able to split your problem up you don't have to run that four processes that i talked about just now just in your computer alone you can actually send part of your problem to another computer or another computer or many, many computers all around the world, something like what Folding as Home is doing, and you'll be able to do it much faster. So just for context, uh, the Folding at Home cluster is actually much more computer, much more powerful than any supercomputer uh, you can find in the world. I think a few of them combined is still smaller than that. Uh, however, uh, the problem with parallel comp computing is that your problem need to be parallelizable means that the, the first process and the second process, in this case, the first instruction and you send a second instruction cannot be dependent on each other. So if you need to run problem one before you run problem two, you're gonna run into a problem when you do parallelization. So it has to be independent. So the better example in bioinformatics that I can think of on, my, on top of my head is something like a blast, a basic ochre alignment search tool. When you're blasting your transcript to a database, where the first transcript result has no relevance to the second transcript result. So you can do them independently of each other and it wouldn't affect the final result. However, if you're running like a normalization or you are running like a PCA or sex, for example, you cannot normalize half of your result and not do the other half with um, not do the other half at the same time so it, it doesn't work that way you cannot run correlation on half the data set and half a data set and try to combine them they wouldn't work properly like that because you have to run all of them at the same time for the whole normalization to work or the whole pca to work where some of the things are uh, sequential to one another okay so how do you do it in r in this case you can see i have an example where you can see parallel computing is a little bit faster than series computing uh, which is what it is trying to tell in this um, picture but i'm going to show you the code one by one how it works so again you can actually see all this uh, this uh, script exact script that i use in my github page which will be linked in the uh, description down below and that will bring you to this page and you can download the code and go through with me yourself on your computer. So the first of all is that I always keep this chunk. Actually, this is the default chunk when I created our markdown file and I just keep them, don't need to care. So the second part is I usually, before I start any of my project, I'll remove every single object in my environment just so that my object from one 
one uh, my previous project will not contaminate this project because I kind of recycle variable. Uh, don't do that if you can, but you know, sometimes for convenient purposes, I'll use the same data, DF and the DF. So not a good practice. So do what I say and no one do. So we're going to use the uh, library called do snow. So far, this is the one that I found that works really well on Windows. And we are running Linux or Mac. There's an easy way called MCL apply, but this is specifically on Windows. So the first thing you do is select how many cores do you want to run. So uh, for best result, um, try to only run it on physical processes and not logical processes because in Intel, there's something called hyper-threading and in AMD is called SMT, simultaneous multi-threading. So try to check out what CPU do you have and only run the, the socket SOCK on physical processor. I'm going to run it on two over here just to show you an example, but I actually have four physical processors over here. So what you need to do is to first of all, make a cluster for the computing and register those cluster in R. So that will allow R to understand that you have four processor and they can split the job. Otherwise, R studio itself would not actually use more than one threads. That's the problem that I find last time. Okay, so next one, I'm going to use a library called for each. So for each is the, um, the package that's able to split the data up based on the compute cluster that we talked about just now. So in this case, how do you read this is that for each is kind of like a for loop for R for I in one to 28, we can we need to do the parallel computing of square root I. So uh, we're running a function called square root I because the square root of the first value has no relevance to the second value. So it should actually, um, it should be able to utilize parallel computing uh, more efficiently and correctly. So you'll be able to see that um, this is the output of the result where the thing will run 27, 28 times and you give out the square root of each of the, uh, each of the value. So the square root of 28 is 5.29. And because it's really difficult to see because the output is one by one, you can use a combine equals to C. So that means that you combine everything into a list, as you can see from the command command attached over here. So yeah, uh, actually this is a code adapted with the, the web, no, the, the website that I attached above, just in case people don't know that. Okay, so once you have a combined C, you can see that it's the same result as above, but now it's much easier to see because you have essentially combined all the output into a list object and it's much easier for you to extract them later. So instead of doing it as a list, you can also combine them as kind of a data frame so that they become like a two-dimensional data that you can really use. So you can see that we also have 28 because I is from one to 28 and we combine them, we use a column by, which is mean that they call, yeah, they buy them as column one by one and we use a letter one to four. So in this case, letter itself is an object containing A to Z. So letters one to four means when the printout A, B, C, D, and every single time it is running this for loop, it will attach four letters onto the new um, data, not data frame, they will export four. So you're exporting four uh, 28 times in a row, which is what you got all this thing. Okay, so instead of doing like a letter, square root, or any inbuilt function, it's also actually possible to code your own function. So this is the function that you really need to think about. Is your uh, function, first of all, able to be parallelized to make sure that the first process and the second process are independent of each other. Otherwise, you're going to run into a trouble um, running them, okay? So in this case, uh, I'm going to write a custom function, which is square root 25. So just to show you an example and easier. So in this case, when you run this, the output will be something like this. Let, let's just print out the output here. Okay, so you can see that we still have 28 different data under C bind, but now every single data is actually um, the square root of the data plus 25. Same concept as above. And these four are just simple example of how you can run your, uh, how you can run code in a parallelized matter okay so once you have finished your run remember to stop the cluster and make sure that the the that you don't you know uh to tell r i want to go back to single threads otherwise they'll register multiple and you might mess up things later on okay so now comes the the example of a little bit more complicated data on 
how we can use the same concept that we learned into a more elaborate functions. Okay, so what we're gonna do is that we, we're gonna use a matrix of four columns and we're gonna do an output where we have a value of column one minus column two plus column three divided by column four. Okay, so the exact calculation doesn't matter, but this is just to give you an example of how uh, because individual rows are uh, all rows are independent of each other. It is a very good example of how you can do parallel computing. Okay, so the first thing, of course, is to create a matrix with 1 to 80,000 with all the columns. So that will give you 20,000 rows to work with. And we're gonna uh, initiate the output as serial. Otherwise, you'll get, um, you, you'll get an error. So we're gonna use the same for each. Okay, so before we go into the parallelization, we also need to run a series just to show how different are they. Uh, so in normal way of how we run a, a, a for loop, we use for row number in one to the total number of row, and we use the output as row number one, two, three, four into an output, and every single loop, we actually pipe the output into something called output serials. Uh, serial. So when you run the whole thing, you realize that it will take about a few seconds and you can see that these are the output from the first and sixth uh, value from the output series. Okay, so now we're gonna run the same thing in parallel. So what we're gonna do is that we're gonna make cluster with two cores. We just want to use two, we just want to use two cores for this example. And the row indexes will be actually the same as how we do C is one equals to n row just now. Exactly the same thing, just um, code in differently because it will be easier to see later. So you can, as you can see, this function is the same function that we did just now for the for each, where for each of this, which is number row is all index row index, which is one to twenty thousand, uh, we use a combined C, which is combine them into a list. We do this. Okay, our output is input data one minus two plus three divided by four. And after the function, we return this value and we pipe the whole calculation into an object called output parallel and you print out the first of the output parallel. So you can see that the answers of them are essentially exactly the same, but the time of execution is going to be different. So you would expect the parallel in this case to be faster because I'm running two, two, I'm running two cores. It should be faster. But um, this is where things get a little bit more nuanced. Um, what they have to do in this case is that uh, instead of running it straight away, uh, what R Studio have to do, or in this case R have to do, is that they have to take the problem, first of all, split the problem into two cluster, and then present the two different instruction to that two cluster. So there's some processing time needed which is why you can see uh, if we're using a system time to measure the same two function, the, the series process only takes 2.21 seconds, but the parallel process takes 11.2 seconds. So it's actually five times slower because it's spending all the time trying to split up the problem, distribute things here and there, and there's only two cores. So in this case, actually running things in parallel is actually a, a penalty you get a speed penalty for running things in parallel when your data set is very small or your problem is very small. So yeah, if you have a small problem that only takes a few seconds to run, don't parallelize it because it's gonna waste all of your time. So yeah, so remember just now we only run 80,000 of data point. Uh, it's a small problem, so we, data parallelization doesn't work. So how parallelization will actually work is when you have a much bigger data set and you're running it in much more number of cores, which is what the second example is supposed to represent. So you can see now we are creating a much bigger problem. So in this case, instead of 80,000 is, I believe, one, uh, 10 million. So it's actually 10 million, more than 10 times bigger than the original data set. Um, and we're gonna, same thing, run a series time and we print out the series time, where the series time now is actually 166.9, which is about two and a half minute. And if you parallelize it, I also change it to not three cores. Uh, why do I use three cores instead of four? Because I kind of need my uh, my last core to run everything else on my computer. Otherwise, you know, I'm also recording and stuff. So I'm running three cores on my computer on the parallel computing, 
which is why now you can see that um, the, the time is actually reduced from 166 to 130. That essentially is a 20 to 30 percent reduction in the total amount of time. So what I do is I would actually also plot it out as two different bar charts. And you can see parallel processing is a lot faster than series processing. Yeah, so so it is worth doing it if you know what you're doing it, if you know how you're doing it and you know uh, it can actually help you and also if you have a computer that's able to leverage all this thing. So basically just a whole um, summarization just to check on your understanding. First of all, what is parallel computing and why do we need to use it? Parallel computing is running a problem. Uh, you can you split the problem up into multiple smaller problems and you span, you send different problems to in different processes for them to process individually and then you combine it back. Just that make sure when you have this kind of problem, they are very parallelizable. Means that one instruction is independent of another instruction and when you combine them, it doesn't have to be relying on each other. So how do you run it in R is to have two packages. First is do snow and the second one is for each. So in do snow, register the cluster, sorry, make a cluster and register a cluster and in for each, run in a for loop and run this, um, run the, so it will run for, if you initiate a for loop, you run the instruction in the back in a multi parallel sorry, in a parallel uh, processing matter. Exactly how, I'm not too sure. I might want to do that later on. Okay, so as you can see, you can actually use the code to run it on your own and you'll be surprised that it might actually not work very well for your computer, um, but I will suggest you to try on and maybe put a comment down below on how this code actually works on your computer. So obviously this is gonna be just the part one of the whole parallel computing process and I actually plan to put some actual bioinformatics analysis into this situation and see how it performs. Uh, for now, that will be everything that I have to say this week. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye. Well, of course, uh, like and subscribe if you can and that will be done.